What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, and NASCAR home. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. With me to break down yet another NASCAR race as we roll into Darlington, it's Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? What's up, Kyle? Man, Martin Truex Jr. was right there near the front. So close. So close. Yeah. You got that um, Chase Elliott top five. So that sure was Sure did. But... That felt really good. Uh, it was nice to, to hit a winner for sure. Yeah, I thought we were going to be able to come on here and and both rebound after uh, picking uh, Kyle Larson and Stenhouse, who I think <laughs> finished 35th and 36th the week prior. So, uh, yeah, um, I thought, you know, and, and Truex ran a great race. It was right there. Yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, it was a fun race. It was, a, it was definitely entertaining, and um, you know, it was interesting I, to see Kyle Larson. He scored a hundred DK points and yeah. wound up finishing nineteenth. That just showed how dominant he was. Yeah, but those those laps led are so important. He was crushing, and uh, you know, I told you uh, we should have gone with the Bush for the Bushy McBush race, but I picked <laughs> the wrong one. So, uh, congrats to Kyle Bush. Yet another you different different winner. So it'll be interesting to see if we can keep that rolling. Um, quick programming potential. Um, just want to let everybody know NASCAR is potentially going to be bringing back, um, qualifying and potentially having it as the same day as the race. You know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, but that will definitely throw a wrench into, into kind of how we do things. Um, so you know, like I said, we'll, we'll cross that bridge, but if it's, if you would be interested in maybe a live stream between the qualifying and the race, or, you know, I, I guess let us, let us know down in the comments yeah. how you would like to see, how you would like to see this content continue if that were to happen. And, you know, right now that nothing has happened and um, for, from a betting perspective and from a DraftKings perspective, the, the way they have it set up with the automatic, um, starting grid is is phenomenal for us it makes it so much easier it makes it you know be able to plan our, our day and, and kind of finagle when we need to and uh you know nascar doesn't apparently you know we're bringing you know dfs and betting and all this stuff's bringing all these extra new yeah. eyes including ours you know we we obviously watched it uh from afar you know throughout throughout growing up and and whatnot but um uh, you know really brought it back um because of DFS, because of betting and can't say, you know, I got to say I'm enjoying the hell out of it, but uh, yeah, if, if they bring back uh, uh, qualifying and, and if they do qualifying on the same day, that could, that could pose a real nightmare to, to what we do and at least how we're doing it now. So uh, yeah, if a live stream would be interesting, if you want some sort of written article and um, you know, obviously, and then we could bring some, some video content later, however you want to do it. But uh, we'll, we'll obviously we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but we got a race to talk about. Um, the Goodyear 400, Brian. I'm very disappointed in NASCAR this week. Um, after the the run of unique, uh, yeah, that's exactly ex- what I was thinking. Extraordinary names. Um, we're going with just the Goodyear 400. Um, headed to Darlington. It's gonna be a fun race. There's there's a few things they're gonna want to get into obviously uh but let's just take a quick look at the betting boards and and, and kind of get off and running um on that kyle larson is your favorite at four to one uh plus 130 i will be uh, investing somehow i'm pro- definitely top three probably some sort of outright uh he is as you mentioned even with the 19th place finish he's running amazing right now yes. um he is dominant uh not only at darlington but this style of track. Um, so he's definitely someone that will, will garner my interest. Uh, fo- followed quickly by Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, uh, another guy that, 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 you know, made my eyes, um, Ooh, you know, pop for a little bit. Party Marty, Kyle Bush, uh, coming off the win. Um, where's your head at? And with your initial leans, anything, um, in terms of uh, you know seeing the odds, where where did your where did your mind go? Where did your ooh, that could be an interesting spot to to get involved? I I mean I gotta say I I guess I'm just a sucker for the eventuality of stuff happening. But like for I I keep looking at Denny Hamlin. Yeah. I mean he's he's got to win one right. He started so well. I mean even last week he started 20th, wound up finishing I think it was 12th. So. He, he still he still made a decent day of it and he's been running 
as the number one or close to the best car pretty much in every single race that he's ran. So I think like Hamlin for me is a guy that I will consistently be placing bets on until it actually hits <laughs> <laughs> something I like to do in uh, football. I chase those touchdowns. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I, I like him. I, I like, um, I, I can't go back to the well with, with Kyle Bush. He just hasn't been running consistently yeah. this season. So I don't think he's somebody I'd be looking at. Same thing with Brad Keselowski. He's, he's a guy who I, I just don't see the, the week to week, like top five, top three finishes out of him. Yeah. You know, it, I think chase Elliott is a guy who could pop this week. He's been kind of running really quietly and he just seems toward, towards the end of races or something seems to be happening to him. So I think he's a good, he's a good value at 10 to one there, but yeah, for me, it's Hamlin and even the potential of Kevin Harvick, as you'll yeah. see with my DK, it's kind of a blast from 2020 for me this week. Yeah. I, and it's interesting, you know, well, I think of the names that, you know, if we want to keep the trend going, I think Kevin Harvick makes a hell of a lot of sense. Um, really rolling, running into form, obviously a second at Kansas, a fourth at Talladega. Richmond didn't go so well, but a ninth at Martinsville, um, you know, three top tens in his last four races, two top fives in his last two races. Um, trending the right way, has a ton of success, not only in Darlington, but at these style of tracks. Um, Denny Hamlin would make a lot of sense as well. Obviously, great odds. Uh, you know, his, his short odds say that he's expected to be in the in the conversation. And then Chase Elliott would be another one that could that could make a lot of sense if we want to keep the trends rolling. Um, if we're looking beyond the outrights, if we're looking at top fives, top tens, anyone stand out as as uh, a potential? I could go. I could go. I could go there. I could. You know that, that those odds seem to seem to make me want to jump on board. Um, you know, a guy like for me was probably like Tyler Reddick. I mean, looking at his top 10 at plus 135, he's a guy who I, last year he 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 got worse progressively in all three races that they actually ran at this track be, uh, with a 7th, 13th and 23rd place finish. But I mean, he's a guy he's been he's been running surprisingly really consistently over the last few races of this season. So I mean, if you're looking at how good he's just doing in the now he's running really well. He's running right near that top 10. And this is a track where he has decent success. So I, I like that number getting plus money at a potential top 10 for a guy running near the top 10 this, yeah. this year. And he's going to be know? starting 10th. I love that. Um, plus four seventy five for a top five is something I could definitely talk myself into. Yeah. I have a Reddick's absolutely a guy that makes a ton of sense for me. Um, what do you think about, uh, and this will, you know, I'm going to parlay this into um, into a, a bigger conversation, but like Christopher Bell is somebody that I, you know, I keep finding myself gravitating towards. His course, his track history at Darlington isn't the greatest. And so that is a little bit concerning. Uh, but I feel like, you know, and I, and I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of regurgitating this, but I feel like he's, becoming a much better driver obviously in a much better ride uh growing as he be evolves kind of into that next tier of the nascar elites um uh, do you th do you think he's a guy that's trending the right way that could uh make a nice stance here this week yeah he he was actually a guy that i looked at just because i mean he's kind of gone quiet over the last, you know, handful of races, his, his name has kind of, you know, faded back at, from that top tier of the pack. But yeah. he's a guy who he's been running really, really well this year. He's kind of coming into his own after taking over that number 20. Um, I think he's got a great shot for a potential top 10 finish, even at, even at a track that he hasn't really ran that well. I mean, he's got a fast car. He's shown the ability to pop at particular tracks. So Christopher Bell was a guy that I also kind of gravitated to because of the trend of he was really popular early on in the season. And now mm -hmm. he's kind of faded away. So he's that quiet value. And, you know, it it's super crazy to me when you look at it again, like a, a guy like William Byron, he's still barely um, favored to finish top 10 for yeah. nine straight at this point. I mean, how do you bet against that? Yeah, and he's starting what fifth or sixth, I think, this week. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, 
So Christopher Bell is it matched up with Ryan Blaney in head to heads. Blaney has started seventh, fifth, and seventh in his last three trips to Darlington. He's finished 24th, 21st, and 16th, uh, trending the wrong direction. Um, you know, has has a couple, uh, you know, a lot, no, no top tens. Uh, he's been in the top 15, uh, four of his, what, seven, four of his eight trips there. Uh, two, tw- two t- tw- twice finishing in the 20s. That was a mouthful. Um, and then <laughs> twice finishing in the 30s. So doesn't have a, tr- a great track record at this track. Obviously, you know, had a, didn't have a great track record, I think, two weeks ago, but what before Kansas, and ended up having a decent race and ended up finishing you know, near the front. So that doesn't always mean anything, but I, I you know, I, I like to look at, The odds say that he probably won't finish well, and if I'm getting plus money on Christopher Bell at William Hill or minus 104 versus uh, Ryan Blaney at DK, uh, I I think I could be on board with that. Yeah, and you know, just looking at the way that they've driven throughout the entirety of this year, looking at NASCAR.com's like driver rating, Christopher Bell is two spots behind by like three points of Ryan Blaney in terms of driver rating. So they're basically the same driver. And if you're going to get plus money for a dude, who's just kind of people are sleeping on. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. kind of where I, where I'd be looking. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Anything else on our big board before we flip over and, and talk a little draft games. Uh, no, I mean, I, I like Tyler Reddick as a guy to potentially pop into that, you know, even a, potential top five finish with him, just how well he's run this year. And when you're looking at something like that, you're getting a plus four seventy five at that number. So that's a guy who I might take a chance on this week. Yeah. Matt DiBendetto is another one that, that is, is somewhat interesting to me. Plus one thirty five for a top 10, uh, 10 to one for a top three. I have to look at what his top five um, odds are, but I think he is somebody that, has been running really well. Uh, Matt D. Bendetto plus four seventy five for a top five. There's another name that I could I could get on board with. He's been running really well. Uh, has a decent run of um, success at at Darlington and at these style of tracks. Not not the greatest, but you know another guy that's kind of evolving to a new level. And um, you know I, I, those those numbers are are definitely compelling enough for me to p- potentially get involved with a top five or a top ten. Uh, let's switch over. Let's talk some DK and I'll throw up your core to start. Uh, Denny Hamlin is your guy. 10, six, you you're betting him, uh, and you're backing him on DK. Yeah. I just don't like even, even in his worst, even in his worst races where he actually finished, I mean, not, not in the races where he wound up being three laps down. I mean, you're looking at 40, 45 plus points almost guaranteed yeah. every single race. And even though he's one of the most, I think he's the second most expensive driver, you're still getting the value there. And the, he's starting seventh. So you have the movement spots and the potential for him to be your dominator. So I think for me, he makes more sense than even a Kyle Larson who has more chance of, you, you know, crashing out or placing further down and finishing further down in the, in the finishing grid because you've seen it throughout this year. Whereas Hamill is just more consistent. Yeah. Kevin Harvick. I, I mean, we were kind of talking that he was kind of old and all this stuff and he's only put together three of his last four, our top 10 finishes. Yeah. And you know, he's been running faster than he has all season these past few races. And this is a track where he absolutely kicks everyone's, you know what? I mean, eight straight top tens here and the, you know, it, that that includes the other two races that d- weren't the normal Darlington race here. So, it, you know, that 10 straight top tens um, for only 9,600. And he's starting in the, t- you know, in the top half of the grid, he's starting second. Yeah, That's he's starting great. second. Another guy who could be a huge dominator, a lap yes. leader. Um, and yeah, it, as long as he finishes kind of, you know, even with this with Kyle Larson, if he runs a really good, two thirds of the race and ends up finishing 12th or something, you'll still get a ton of fantasy points from him uh, over on DK. So he, he's somebody that, yeah, I'm, I'm a hundred percent on board with exactly uh, at jumping on, on him and, and finding a little way to save some salary. Yeah. And then, you know, you go down to Austin Dillon, $7,500 for a guy starting in the top 10. Hell yeah. 
and a dude who's averaged 30 plus he's he scored 30 plus dk points in eight of the nine eight eight of the of the nine like important races this season so this is a guy who he's going to get you points for only seventy five hundred dollars and he has the potential of moving up and even getting you some dominator points and some laps led from starting inside that top 10 i'll take that um ryan priest he's kind of that I'm taking a chance here, but Mm -hmm. for only $5,900, I have the chance of a guy of scoring 30 plus DK points. He's done that five of 11 total races in 2021. And for only 5,900, I'm going to take the shot on that. Yeah. Well, as you can see with my DK core, I am hundred percent on board with you. Uh, With the, I think creating lineups this week, you're going to have to find a way to save some money. Yeah, uh, Ryan Priest is is going to be able to allow you a lot of flexibility near uh, near the top. Um, I'm not sure how crazy I want to get towards that, you know, below 7K range. But, um, you know, I'm going to have to probably get to one or two because, as you can see, I will be going with Kyle Larson. I will be betting Kyle Larson. Uh, I will be all over him in DK. Um, despite running only uh, two races, I'm looking on driveraverages.com. Uh, uh Every most drivers have somewhere, you know, all the all the big guys have five races. Uh, Kyle Larson has two races at Darlington um, in the in this stat model. Uh, three hundred twenty eight laps led is number one. Uh, Truex is number two with two forty two. So, and Truex ran five five races at Darlington while Larson's only ran two. So uh, that's that's really impressive. And if you're going to want somebody to dominate laps, lead laps, um, I think he makes a ton of sense and. Uh, maybe he doesn't do it initially. So someone like Kevin Harvick could make sense as you, you have him as your early dominator. And then when Kyle Larson takes over, maybe after stage one or towards the end of stage one, uh, you know, they can kind of flip flop and, and you can rack up points that way. Uh, I like me some Alex Bowman this week, 9,400. Um, feel like he's in a really good spot to, to make some, make some noise. Obviously starting 19th. Um, I like that. I think he has plenty of opportunity to move up to, to make some noise and, and has been running really well. Obviously you had the win uh, a couple weeks ago at Martinsville. Uh, right? I think it, I think it was Martinsville. Let me, That's, I can... we'll, we'll go, we'll go with Martinsville for right now. While Brian fact checks um, my, my nonsense, but uh, has a good run, uh, a top five, two top tens um, in his last five races. So uh, at darling at uh, Darlington. So, Running well, uh, you know, trending in the right direction. Plenty of differential points, uh, plenty of opportunity to move up. I like him. Richmond, uh, Richmond that's what it was. Um, Tyler Reddick, seventy four hundred. Uh, you know, starting a little higher than I like, but definitely adds the flexibility of the salary savings. Um, I think has a chance to perform really well this week and. Uh, at least stay kind of where he is. Uh, I think he has a chance to move up. I think he has a chance to maybe even be a sneaky, uh, you know, dominator early um, and at 7,400. And then, you know, we talked about Ryan Priest, but um, I think he makes a ton of sense as well as as just a way to save some salary. So, um, you know, the, those are some of the names that we are looking at. Um, I think, you know, if we're if we're talking at the early part, or I, I guess the 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 front runners, the dominators, the more expensive guys. You're looking at Hamlin, uh, Truex, Kozlowski, Kyle Busch. Like, um, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's really either either Hamlin or or, um, or Larson if you're spending up, and and even then those guys aren't necessarily front of the pack. Um, but I still think they have plenty of opportunities to dominate early. Yeah, and um, of note, too, I'm just looking over like the last few races here. The last time a Chevrolet won here was 2014 when Kevin Harvick took took home the, the trophy. It's been Toyota, 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 Ford, Toyota, Ford, Toyota, Ford. Yeah. So... <laughs> and mean, we both we both like Chase Elliott, and he's yeah. starting sixth, and we didn't even mention him in 9200, so... <laughs> I don't know. There's there's some interesting you get like I think uh, starting with Elliot Harvick could be an interesting way uh, to to save some salary to to you know have two guys that have dominator potential and then 
work your way back if you want to have more of a balance build. But um, yeah, I know I, it's going to be hard for me to to fade Kyle Larson because I just think he's running so well. He obviously has a ton of track record at this at, at Darlington, and, and I think he has a very good shot to not only contend but to to win the race outright. Yeah, I was I was tweeting back and forth with another another guy who I've connected with uh, who does like NASCAR stuff, and he he was also saying like this is an extremely top heavy week in DK. Like you gotta, it's, it's, you know, you're, you're sorting through needles of all, of all same colors here looking for value because of mo- the majority of your lineups are going to be filled with guys running near the top, starting near the top and are really expensive. So it's going to be difficult to find those guys who are starting far back in the pack. Unlike yeah. the previous couple weeks. Right. Um, yeah. So with that being said, Brian, I think it's best bet time. Uh, what you got for me? So this one, I've been getting kind of crazy and I'm going to go crazy again. I, I, I really like Austin Dillon this week to continue his trend of success over these last handful of races. He had a second place finisher last year in the last race. So I'm going to go with Austin Dillon top five finish plus 525 Woo! now we're cooking with gas go big or go home baby yeah well apparently i'm gonna have to go home because kyle larson top three is gonna be my play it's plus 130 it's plus money i'm i i will be like i said i will be i will be looking at the outright market as well um but kyle larson top three i think makes a ton of sense and then um tyler reddick top five uh chase elliott top five plus 125 is interesting um and then what was the other one we were looking at that was plus 475 oh matt d i like matt d bendetto too um as a top five but yeah for for the uh for the best bet i'm going kyle larson top three i'm gonna start um, my, i know the odds you know, I'm getting plus money. I'm not going to complain, and I'm just going to try and rack up these best bets while Brian shoots for the moon. I'm going <laughs> to shoot for the stars uh, and just try and keep racking them up and building that bankroll and and seeing where I can get. So, let me just say, I will I will be smash betting another William Byron top ten. So, oh yeah, got to, got to. Uh, it's pretty much a, a, a it's how that's how our cards have to start these. These next few weeks for sure. Um, if you're enjoying the content, make sure you hit that uh, like button. You know, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Uh, turn on the bell notification so you know when we're posting new content. Um, let us know in the comments not only who you like this week, who you know your favorite bets, uh, but what kind of content you would see if uh, you'd like to see uh, if uh, if you know qualifying comes back, and especially if it's going to be you know, the same day. Like if it's, if we qualify on Saturday and then run on Sunday, there may be some wiggle room and able to to kind of finagle a a similar, similar model. But if they're qualifying late and then, you know, we're, we're getting this up, it won't have a ton of time to to live on YouTube. So let us know what would make the most sense for you and then keep you coming back to watch uh, our content. Brian and I both really appreciate everybody for checking us out and, um, Football's around the corner, so we will be bringing that to you as well with the draft in the books. And uh, for Brian Twining, I'm Kyle Robert, and we'll talk to you all next time.